So this is a scanner from Nikon. Yes, Nikon, the camera company, used to make scanners. Um, this is one of their last scanners, and they made medium format or 120 scanners as well, which did 120, um, 35 mil negatives and slides. And I think it actually did X-Pan as well. I'm not sure about that. Somebody let me know down below. I think it actually did X-Pan scans as well. Now, Nikon made these up until about 2005, 2006, I think. This is actually a 2003 model. This is one of the last models. Now, this is a 35 mil negative and slide scanner. Now, it's an auto feed scanner. Its maximum resolution is 4,000 DPI. Now, that's an optical resolution, not digital. A lot of the modern scanners now, it's actually a digital resolution. So it's using computer software to bring it up to 4,000 DPI. But this is optical, and this has an ED element in it. What that basically means is you're going to get a much sharper and clearer scan of the negative. Now, it's actually a scanner because it scans a negative, unlike if you're using a mirrorless camera. I don't actually know what you call that because I've had a, I call it digitalized. Digitalize, yes, that's how you say it, digitalize, but apparently it's wrong. So it's just using your mirrorless camera to convert your negative into a digital format. We'll leave it as that. This is actually a scanner because it scans the negative. There is a scanning head in there and it will do that for you. Now it has a CCD sensor. CCD sensors are quite famous in Leica cameras like the M8 and M9. They give you a very unique look to your images and it's the same with this. It gives you a better look, I think, to the negatives than using your camera because that uses a CMOS sensor. The sensors are quite different to each other really. There is a different look to it. This has a CCD sensor in it. Now it's a USB 2.0 interface on the back, which is very handy for modern computers because you can just use a dongle or plug it into most modern computers. You've got no problem. But I'm using the Apple MacBook Pro 13 inch M1. And this has got USB 3.0, USB-C, Thunderbolt, whatever. But I need a dongle for this and it works fine. Just to let you know, the software I'm using, which is third party software, works perfect on this computer. So this scanner works like normal on here, so no problem at all. There is the power socket. Now, this actually is 100 to 240 volts. This will work in any country. Now, I've never seen this covered in any of the reviews because I know a lot of people buy these off eBay or internationally and ship them to the countries and they're a little bit worried about the voltage. This will work in every single country. It's 100 volt to 240 volt. So it'll work back home in my country, the UK. It works here in New Zealand, no problem. It will work in Taiwan, Hong Kong, anywhere like that in the world this will work fine, which is quite unique because a lot of the modern scanners come with adapters on them and they only work in certain countries and everything else. But this will work in any country, which is a nice feature to have because like I said, most people buy these on eBay. There's quite a few on eBay you can purchase and it does worry some people because they're worried about the voltage, but it will work in every single country. Now I purchased this one here in New Zealand on an auction website called Trade Me. We don't actually have eBay here, we have Trade Me. I paid 950 New Zealand dollars, which is around about 700 US dollars, or Kiwi dollars we call it here. For some reason they call it Kiwi dollars, I don't know why, but it's New Zealand dollars. It's 950. Now, this scanner doesn't look like it's been used very much. Now, the owner of the scanner gave me the box, everything, shipped it to me. I even got, let me reach over here, I got the oh, original manual, um, quick start guide. I've even got the software disks, which are no good because they don't work with any systems. It may work with some of the old Windows systems, but I'm not a Windows user. I use Apple computers. And I even have the original warranty card, which is from TA McAllister's, which is when Nikon was Nikon in New Zealand. Um, that was a long time ago, actually. Yeah, so I actually have the original warranty card. They got everything, the box, the lock, everything, cables, two different adapters, everything. And the scanner is like brand new. I actually opened it up the other day because I was curious to see how much dust was inside. There's nothing inside. So whoever had it didn't use it that much. Now, the one thing you do need to be careful of is a lot of companies use these in a commercial space, basically, in an office. Um, newspapers, journalists use them. A lot of photographers, they did abuse them a lot. They did overuse them. So be careful that you don't buy one that's been overused. But from what I've seen, most of them are online. And the ones I've owned, this is probably my fifth scanner, to be truthful. Yeah, it is actually the fifth scanner I bought. I sold all the other ones. Um, somebody offers me a good price and I sell it. And then I buy another one. This is the best condition I've ever seen one in. It looks brand new. There's not a mark on it anywhere, even on the bottom. Now, you can actually stand it like that. And you can actually stand it on its side like that. You can lay it down. But I prefer to keep them like this. Now, the adapters I got with mine, which most of them I've looked on Trade Me. No, eBay, sorry. Trade Me's here. eBay. They come with the same adapters. Now, this is... Um, I'm going to look at it. It's the MA21, which is the slide adapter. So you basically slide a slide in and it will scan it from this. 
Um, bit of plastic basically, because remember the scanning system is inside of this box. But this will do slides. And then you've got this, which is the SA21. Now this is the one that I like the most because this will scan negatives, a strip of negatives. Now I've only ever tried six negatives on a strip. So something like this, when you get your film developed, you get it back like this. And there's six negatives on a strip. And I've had no problem with it. I've not tried it of anything longer because I actually developed my own black and white film here and it's just on a long roll. I haven't tried to feed that into there. I do think it will come out the back, but I haven't pushed it that far. I've only ever tried it with six negatives on a strip. Now this cartridge, or adapter they call it, goes in there as easy as that. Now make sure your machine is shut down and turned off before you swap the cartridges. Don't try and do it when the machine is turned on because the head is engaged and you're gonna damage something. Make sure it's all turned off and shut down, and then we do is just basically yank it out. There's no locking mechanism to it. Now, if you're not using the scanner for a while, I do recommend keeping at least one of the adapters in. This one, which is the slide adapter, is the best one to keep in because there's nothing protruding out the front. It will stop dust getting inside, and it will stop little wandering hands getting in there as well. Um, my son, Jack, who's just over two now, sees a hole like that, and his toys will go in there. So this will protect the scanner inside, protect it from dust, and protect it from little hands too. It's a really, really nice scanner. Very, very reliable. Um, like I said, I've owned five of them now, and they've been very, very reliable. No problems with them at all. Um, they're actually quite fun to use when you feed your, neg your negatives into it, and it eats it away, and it readjusts it, and it takes care of everything. Now, like I said, the software doesn't work anymore, sadly. Um, Nikon never kept the software up, and I can quite understand that. This is 18 years old. They're not gonna do that anymore. But you can use a third party software from a company called ViewScan. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that right. Now, there's two types of the software. There is a standard version, which is $69.95, so 70 um, Australian dollars. And there's one that's 120 Australian dollars. And that's the professional version. That's the version I'm using. But I basically use it in the standard version, to be truthful. It does such a good job. So if you're on a budget, go for the standard version. But if you want all the features, all the bells and whistles, go for the professional. It's 120 or 119.95. Australian dollars, which is basically 120. It's a very easy software to use. Now we're gonna cover that in a minute. We'll swap over to the computer screen and we'll do a few scans so you can see it actually operating. But I'm not gonna to go too much in depth with the software because that's for other people to do. Or if you want me to do a video on that, let me know down in the comment section. I will do a video actually on the software and using it. But it's a very, very easy software. Very easy to get started. So once you've got your scanner turned on and the film loaded, you'll open up your software and you'll have this window basically. Now, there are two settings, like I said, this is the basic mode. So you're gonna have color negative, you can have black and white negative slide and image. Um, you have your resolution. Um, I'm actually going to the maximum of 4,000 DPI and you can rotate and so on. So it's very, very easy to use and you have your destination folder too. Now, if you go up to the professional, one, you can see there's a lot more to choose from. So the film's loaded, so basically what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a scan, and we're gonna let it roll through the scan so you can see how fast it is at actually doing a scan and a preview. We'll do the preview first for a preview so you can actually see which negative you've actually scanned, and then you could decide if you wanna do a full resolution scan of it, which will take about one to two minutes, I think it is, for a full resolution scan. So as you can see, the scanner has done a preview scan. So this is a full 4,000 DPI scan of a 35 mil negative. Now what I'm gonna do, I will put a few of these images that I've scanned in a Dropbox folder, and the link to that Dropbox folder will be down in the description. So you can actually download some of the photos for yourself and see what the quality of these scans are coming from this scanner that's nearly 20 years old. As you can see, it takes a few minutes to do a scan, but it does a really good job. And remember it's scanning at 4,000 DPI and the machine is 18 years old. But the reliability of the Nikon Cool Scan and the View Scan software, this is View Scan version 9, is incredibly good. I've never had the software crash on me. It just does what it needs to do and gets it done. And in basic mode, you just get a basic scan. If you want to play around a little bit more of your negatives and get a better output, then go for the professional mode because there's a lot more features in the professional mode. Now, some of these scans will be in a Dropbox folder and link to that Dropbox folder will be in the description. So you can actually download some of these scans and check them out for yourself and see what you actually think of the output of the Nikon Cool Scan at 4000 DPI and this software from ViewScan. They both work incredibly well together. This was just a quick overview 
of the software working and doing a scan from the Nikon CoolScan 5. If you want me to do a more in-depth video on the software and using it with the Nikon CoolScan and getting the maximum output you can from the software in professional mode, let me know down in the description. And if there's enough people commenting, I will do a video on it. As you can see, the Nikon CoolScan 5 is a very easy scanner to use with that software. It's a third party software. You do have to purchase the software, but I do think it's worth it because it does work with a lot of different scanners. Um, and it's been very reliable. Even on the new M1 Mac, it works perfect. Not crashed or anything, never had any problems with it. And it makes it very, very easy to scan negatives. You can go into more detail into the software and adjust, do a lot more adjustments, but that's not for me really. I just want to get my negative scanned and get the best possible results. I do enjoy using these scanners because they're fun to use and I think they're very, very cool. I will be keeping this one, which is unusual for me because I do tend to sell my scanners when somebody offers me some good money for it, it's gone. This one, I don't think I'm ever going to find one in this condition again. So I'm very, very happy with the scanner. Now, before I go, I want to talk about next weekend's video. Yes, there will be a video out next weekend and it'll also be a video out in the middle of this week, which will be editing the files from this camera on the M1 Mac. Now, there's a reason for that. You'll see that in the middle of the week. But next weekend's video will be using three different cameras. One is 12 megapixels, one is 24 megapixels, and one is 50 megapixels to convert your negatives into a digital file. Now, one of my most popular videos is using your mirrorless camera to convert your negatives into a digital file. And I get a lot of questions about what camera can I use? Is 10 megapixels good enough, 12, 16 megapixels good enough to get a good result? So what I thought I would do, I would take some of my medium format, 120 negatives, and some of my 35 mil negatives, and I will use all three cameras. And you'll actually have the raw files to download yourself. And you'll also have the final files when I put them through Negative Lab Pro. And we'll have a little bit of chat about it and what I actually think of it, because I haven't done it yet. And I'm quite interested to see is 12, 24, or 50 megapixels, which is best. Is 50 megapixels overkill? Is 24 megapixels overkill? I don't know because I haven't done it yet, but that video will be out next weekend. So that's gonna be quite an interesting video because I know a lot of people want to start converting negatives and they're a little bit worried about wasting their time because they've only got a 12, 16 megapixel camera. So that video will be out next weekend. If you have any questions about that or something you want me to include, leave me a comment down below and I will do my best to include that in the video. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this quick video on the Nikon CoolScan 5, not V, which is one of the best scanners you can buy for 35mm um, negatives and slides. I still think these are the best out there, best value for money. Um, but make sure you get a good one, because if they go wrong, they're going to cost you a lot of money. As always, thank you so much for watching.